Greetings, dear ones. It's good to be together. I've been thinking a lot about this season of liberation. Passover, Palm Sunday, Easter, that sense of a moment in which we cross the sea, a moment in which everything changes all at once. And I understand the theological context of this season of liberation, and I also don't believe that things change all at once. Invitations come. Moments arrive and we salute them with our commitments. When the war broke out, William Channing Gannett wanted to go fight. His father, Ezra, a lifelong and deeply committed pacifist, said no. You're not going to get involved in that fight. That's not your fight. And I don't believe in war anyway. So Gannett went off to Harvard to the Divinity School, another thing he really didn't want to do. And then a year later, word reached the Divinity School that the Union Army had taken back the first land from the Confederacy. It was at a place called Port Royal, across the estuary from Beaufort, South Carolina, just around that peninsula from Hilton Head. In 24 hours, everyone white in the county ran away, leaving 10,000 enslaved men in the fields, their families without the care of their managers and a billion dollar cotton crop in the field. What were they going to do? The Union Army was not prepared to deal with any of this. They were equipped to fight, but they were not in any way prepared to offer the full range of social services, what we call the continuum of care, which was so obviously necessary. So they sent runners back up the coast, and they went to the Unitarians, the Congregationalists, the Methodists, and the Quakers. And they said, do you have any young people of conscience who might like to come south to help to uh, uh, manage and care for uh, these newly freed people? And Gannett saw this as a great opportunity for him to enter into the, the struggle, um, a struggle which he believed in deeply. He had been an abolitionist since his teenage years. So he went, and with him went a couple of hundred other young adults, some from the, from the, uh, some of the most important, famous families in New England. Um, Harriet and Henry Ware Jr. went down. Many, many people went down to Port Royal. And there they encountered very poor black folks whose culture was entirely different from anything they had ever experienced. And it was the first time that progressive white people came into contact with poor blacks in American history. They were inveterate letter writers, and they wrote letters home every day. Thousands of them have been published. The Port Royal experiment was an amazing, amazing event in the turn toward Reconstruction, which then we know degraded into Jim Crow, and the inequities that had preceded that Port Royal experiment became deeper and more difficult in many ways uh, to root out. We're still engaged in that work today. I've been thinking about Palm Sunday and the way in which that ethic of loving confrontation that is at the heart of true religion and is certainly at the heart of unreconstructed Christianity 
took hold when Jesus turned toward Jerusalem, knowing, knowing full well that it would mean struggle and eventually crucifixion. But he went anyway. I've been playing with the notion that he might have gone and had an entirely different experience. He might have found someone at the temple that saw religion as um, a blessing in the world and recruited him to work at the settlement house that the, that the temple had just spun off to care for the poor of the city, and he could have become deeply grounded in his ministry and known for his ministry more than for his martyrdom. But that's a completely speculative thought. Gannett spent three years in Port Royal growing up, learning what that continuum of care would have to look like, and he ended up becoming a minister. He served here and he served for many, many years at the First Unitarian Church in Rochester, New York, and was one of our most prominent social gospel advocates. He saw the church in the world. He saw our ministry in the world. And in time, he wrote these words. The soul has lifted moments above the drift of days when life's great meaning breaketh in sunrise on our ways. Behold the radiant token of faith above all fear. Night shall be lost in splendor, and morning shall appear. Friends, as we take the turn towards spring, as our hope for COVID's end, for a release from the restrictions of the pandemic, begins to take hold and begins to be credible, we return to the notion of faith above all fear. We turn toward the difficult moments ahead with full hearts, with loving at the core of who we are and who we hope to be as we work once again to bring in the reign of mutual respect. This is ministry, friends. We grow as human beings. We grow in courage. We grow in confidence. We grow in compassion. Thank you. Grow with me in this season of liberation. I love you. With every blessing, take care.